Welcome to the next episode of HR Mavericks. I'm your host, Garrett Justice, and today I'm joined by Bryce Erickson, who's the director of HR at Blue Fire Leads. Bryce, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing so great. It's great to have you on the show today. Really excited to dive into our topic today. I think it's going to be a really impactful one, but you know, you've listened to a couple of the episodes already so far, you said, and you know how we usually start is we, we want our listeners to have a little bit of context on who it is that our guest is that's on the show today. So tell us a little bit more about your career background and also what your company Blue Fire Leads does. Yeah, so Blue Fire Leads, we're a lead gen company for home improvement companies such as solar and roofing. So we post ads on social media sites to find people that are interested in these different products. And I've been at Blue Fire Leads for over a year and a half, and I love it here. Uh, Previous, I went to BYU-Idaho, got my undergrad there in international business. Then I worked at New Skin as a recruiter at their international distribution center. Afterwards, I went and worked at Bamboo HR as an HR project manager. And from there, I went to Purdue University to get my MBA degree, where I got a concentration in human resource management. I love it. Well, I'm excited to leverage some of that awesome experience you have to uh, jump into our topic today. But, you know, one of the first questions I really like to ask all of our guests is, why did you choose to pursue a career in HR? Yeah, I love working with people. And I'm sure a lot of people say that, right? They like working with people. But I think also to add on to that is that I feel like HR touches every department within a company, right? Because you're recruiting, you're hiring for all these different organ- or these different departments. Uh, you have to work with performance management. You have to work with employee issues, employment law. And it just touches every single department and you can feel your influence. You know, when you hire somebody, it not only affects that department that they're going to work for, but it affects everybody else that they work for as well. And then HR builds the culture, helps people feel comfortable in the environment, that they feel that they can progress in their careers there. Uh, There's just a lot of things that HR professionals get to do that a lot of people don't see, um, but we touch pretty much everything in the company. Yeah. I love it. So people person that wants to have an impact on the business. I think that makes total sense why you picked HR. That's awesome. Yep. And I, you know, here at Blue Fire Leads, I do everything in HR. I, I'm building the department from the ground up. They didn't have an HR. So I've helped build out the interview process, the onboarding process, offboarding. Uh, you know, I, I work in, you know, all, all aspects of the employee experience, even disciplinary action, benefits, parties, you know, all these different things that, you know, touch the employees on an individual uh, level, as well as kind of on the department and the whole company level. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of responsibility. I know a lot of small business HR people are in that same boat where you're the solo HR person or you're on a small team and you have to wear all of those different hats. And most of the time, they're the type of people who really like that variety, but it's still a lot to do and a lot to prioritize. And I mean, when you're the only one in the department, when somebody comes and asks you an HR question, kind of up to you to, you know, figure it out. And if you don't know it, reach out to other HR professionals, you know, use Google, you know, go to good sites, you know, that, you know, have that information that you're looking for, because I don't pretend to know all the answers. I never have, but I do know how to find the answers when people come up to me and say, Hey, I have an HR question for you. I'm like, okay, I don't know this answer, but let me go figure it out. And then I come up with the solution to that challenge that they might have. I love that. I think that's so key. And that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to start this podcast is we wanted to start sharing some of the insights of small business HR people have. And so that we can share that knowledge and hopefully help each other improve and get better. And we don't have to know everything from the get-go. We just have to know how to go figure it out and find someone who does, right? Exactly. Awesome. Well, I want to jump into our topic today because I think this is going to be a really good one, like I said. So you mentioned you, you know, previously in your career, you were really focused on recruiting. I know that's been a part of all of your different roles. And so as you and I talked about what do we discuss today, you kind of proposed this idea of how to interview applicants with purpose. And I really liked that idea. Um, And so just to start us off, tell us a little bit more about what you mean when you say interviewing with purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, interviewing takes a lot of time out of the HR professionals and as well as other managers within a company. So if you're going to interview, you might as well do it well. You might as well use that time efficiently. And sometimes uh, early on when I was uh, interviewing people, I realized some of the questions I was was asking 
weren't, wasn't really helping me get to the bottom of, of the point of an interview, which is why should we hire this person or should we hire this person? And so just being able to ask those correct questions of, you know, to find out, is this person actually going to make an impact in my company? Is this person actually interested in this company or did they just apply and they just, you know, they're just practicing their interview skills. Like what, what's their purpose? What's our purpose? How do we find the right people for our organization? I love that. So tell me a little bit more about that. So I think that it's really difficult sometimes, especially when you're new to interviewing, even maybe if you have a lot of experience of how do you ask good interview questions? Like what are the attributes of good interview questions? And I know it varies by company and it varies by role, but how have you thought about that in your different recruiting roles, different hiring roles throughout your career? Yeah, I got to make sure that the questions I ask are getting me to where I want to be, which is, should I hire this person? So early on at Blue Fire Leads, we would ask people, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then they'd start answering the question by telling us where they're from and about their family and all these different things that really didn't pertain to what we were looking for. So we've had to adjust and change that question to Tell us a little bit about your work experience and your background, kind of narrow it down. So that way people know, Hey, this is what we're looking for. Maybe later down the road in the interview, we'll ask questions like, what do you like to do outside of work? Right. When we're actually trying to figure out, you know, what kind of person you are, you know, your personality, what do you like to do when you're not working? But in the very beginning, we just want to know like, Hey, tell us about your work experience. Tell us about your background, stuff like that. So we've had to adjust here at blue fire leads in the interview questions we ask because you know, after our interviews, I always talk to the manager that was with me and we talk about, okay, uh, you know, how did we think the interview went? You know, what could we have done better? And usually it's, you know, we can ask better questions or let's not ask this question anymore because we're not getting the answers that we're actually looking for. And uh, so we just need to, we need to adjust. I love that. So the two takeaways that I get from that, what I hear you say is one, I heard you say it twice already is remember the end goal of interviewing is should we hire this person or not? So eliminate all those questions along the way that are just kind of filler questions that don't help you assess whether that's true or not. And then the second that I heard you say is really being able to be with the hiring manager or anyone else who's in those interviews and do a quick assessment afterwards and say what worked and what didn't, what questions should we keep and what should we tweak and change going forward so that we can, again, get better and more efficient at figuring out, is this person a fit for what we need that we should hire or not? Is that right? Exactly. And you know, some questions are better than others. And as you're starting the interview process, as you're, if you're new to interviewing, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to ask questions and they're, you're just going to, you're going to see a pattern of people answering in a way that you don't want them to answer. And so you're going to say, okay, I need to adjust. I need to ask this differently um, because I know what I'm looking for, but I'm not getting that response that I'm, that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So I need to do something different as the interviewer in order to get that response I'm looking for. Yeah. I love that. So that should be a trigger for you when you're not getting the response of what you're looking for in the interview, that should be a trigger for, Hey, I need to tweak this question. I need to figure out another way to ask this so I can elicit the right response. That's again, going to help us determine whether we should hire this person or not. Is that right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, next question I have for you though, is just going a little bit further is after you ask those questions that you feel like are good questions that help you evaluate whether you should hire this person or not, what should impress you about that particular applicant or their response? And what should you not really hold against them in an interview? We all have our own personal biases, right? When it comes right. to this. And so how do you think about that? Like, what are the things that really should impress you and you shouldn't hold against the applicant? Yeah. And when we talked about this a little bit earlier, I was thinking more of things outside of like the question and answer session. I was thinking, you know, like you said, we all have our different biases. We all have our different ways of thinking, Hey, this is how an interviewee should act. Uh, one of the things I thought about is, you know, if an interviewee arrives one minute early to their interview, some people are like, Oh, they don't really care about this job. You know, they should have arrived 10 minutes early. My thought is if they arrive before the interview starts, they're on time, right? Personally, I show up about 10 minutes early, but that's just a personal preference of mine. Another thing that uh, I have noticed is when people, when I meet people, when they come in for interviews is the handshake. Uh, you know, with COVID things have kind of changed, but earlier on when, uh, you know, it was more custom to give handshakes when you're meeting people. Um, I noticed that some people didn't really have very good handshakes. 
they weren't very firm. They weren't very confident. And I just remember in grad school, you know, we were taught, you know, have a firm handshake, you know, look people in the eye, stuff like that. And I just had to learn, like, you know, not everybody has that firm handshake. Some people are nervous. Some people, this is their first job interview. And so those are things that, you know what, I wish they had a little, I wish they had a firmer handshake, but this isn't really going to tell me whether or not they're going to do a good job in the, in, in the job we're interviewing for. Um, and so, you know, change that mindset or not dressing up how you think they should. Maybe somebody shows up business casual and they're not wearing a tie and you think, oh, if I was interviewing for this job, I'd totally be wearing a tie. Like that's one of those things where it's like, you know, yeah, that would have impressed me a little bit more. But really what I'm looking for is, can you do the job? Are you going to come and bring value? You know, am I going to enjoy working with you? Those are the things that matter the most. Now going a little, uh, repeating and talking about these things, if somebody shows up 10 minutes early, it makes you stand out. If you give a firm handshake, it makes you stand out. If you're dressed to impress, it makes you stand out because in my experience, a lot of people don't do these things, which um, I was taught, these are just simple things to do. Um, and so anyway, having to go from being an interviewer or interviewee to an interviewer, I had to kind of change my mindset and say, okay, these things are not that important to what I'm actually trying to accomplish with these interviews. Yeah. I really like that because I think that it goes back to what you were saying at the very beginning. The whole goal of doing interviews is to assess, is this person a good fit for what we need in this role? Right? So there's some things along the way, there's good questions. There's you know, experiences with that person during the interview process that will help you assess that. But I think sometimes what I'm hearing you say, and what I'm thinking about as well, sometimes we, we, uh, make assumptions based on those small things that may or may not really tie to the real purpose of that role. Is that right? Exactly. Yep. Those little things. Yeah. Can they make people stand out? Yeah but they shouldn't really take away from, Hey, can this person do the job? Will this person show up on time? Will they, you know, complete projects on time? Can they work with our coworkers? Those things are more important than did they wear a tie? Did they have a good handshake? You know, did they arrive 10 minutes early? Right. Those things aren't as important. Yeah, that makes sense. And there might be certain jobs where those things could be important, right? It depends a lot on the job description there, but again, making sure it's all tied back to what do we need in this role that we're looking to fill, what are the most important things and how do we assess that through the questions that we ask and the in-person, you know, experience that we have for this candidate. Is that right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So I want to go back to one of the questions or one of the things that you said at the very beginning, which is really about, um, the purpose of your company. You talked about purpose, you talked about culture. So in addition to assessing whether an applicant is really good for the specifics of what you need in this role. How do you assess whether an applicant is a good fit for your company, including the culture and everything else that's unique about your company? Yeah. So one of the questions that you can ask in an interview is, you know, what is your dream job? And see if it even ties to kind of the job that you're uh, interviewing or interviewing that person for. Now, there's a difference between entry level job, hourly job, and you know, kind of a professional job, or you know, you just graduated from college. I mean, there's different levels of whether or not this question is a good question. But it's good to assess whether or not you're going to help this person kind of achieve their dream job or not. Also, you know, ask them, you know, why they're interested in working at your company. Um, now, a lot of people work remote. If the only reason why they want to work for your company is because you offer remote, you know, there's a lot of companies that do that. So what's going to make them stay here as opposed to leaving in a couple months for a different company. So what is it about maybe your mission or your vision or your values? What is actually about your company that makes people want to come and work for you? And I think that is how you can figure out if they're a good fit. I think having on your website, your values. Um, so that way people can do that research and then come in the interview and say, Hey, your values align with my values. And this is why I want to come work for you. I think that's very powerful for an interviewee to do because it shows me as the interviewer that you actually took the time to research the company, that you know what we do and why we do it. And you uh, have those same values as well. Yeah, I think that's great. I know a lot of companies also like to tailor at least some of their questions in the interview around their company's values. So an example being, I worked at a company in the past where one of the values was 
teamwork over ego. So there might be certain questions that were asked to assess how much of a team player is this person based on their previous experiences working on teams? How would they interact in certain situations? Is that something you would recommend as well as is, is orienting questions around company values or interjecting parts of that culture into the interview process? Yeah. So ask them about, you know, how ask them a question that aligned with your values and see how they would uh, act in a certain situation. Ask them how they work in different teams. Ask how they worked with their managers before. Just kind of get that feel of what kind of culture they would bring into, into your organization. Yeah, I love it. So you're assessing whether they're a good fit for the particular role that you're hiring for. And then also some of those questions are assessing whether they're a good fit for the company and the unique culture there. And you're trying to eliminate the personal biases that you might have on things that don't really matter. Like if they only showed up a minute early, right. Or if they didn't dress as nicely as you would have. Right. And as you do that, you're, you're, you're assessing whether they're a really good fit again for that role and for your company. Is that right? Correct. And I was just going to say that I think biases come from, um, our, our, our own biases of, Hey, this is what I would do. They're not doing it. So therefore it's not correct. And we just have to learn that people come from different backgrounds and different cultures and different ways of doing things, different ways that they grew up. So um, usually things are not bad and good. It's usually, hey, it's just a little different. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. So another question I have for you then is with regards to quote unquote, selling your company to the applicant, how much of your time during the interview process is spent? Obviously, you're spending time you know, asking the questions to evaluate whether they're a good fit for the role and for the company, but how much time do you typically spend selling your company and why they should want to work at your company to the potential applicant? Mm -hmm. That's usually at the end of our interview when we try to sell like, Hey, this is why you should come work for us. At the end of every interview, we like to ask the applicants, Hey, do you have any questions for us? And when they uh, ask those questions, it's usually about our culture and about, you know, uh, the day to day and all these different things. And so we like to sell them and say, Hey, you know, if you come work for us, this is the culture we have. This is who you'll be working with. This is what you're going to be doing. And right now we're in an employee market where, you know, people have all these different options. People are leaving their companies for, you know, other companies and, and remote work and all these different things. So it's very important to show, Hey, this is why we are different than everybody else. This is what value we can bring, not just in like benefits, but in your career progression and kind of flexibility and stuff like that. Yeah, I really like that too. I think that it's important to remember that for every applicant, whether they're an hourly employee or an executive, right? They are interviewing the company just as much as the company is interviewing them for the particular role. It has to be that mutual, you know, interview process where you find a good a good match. So we do want to spend time promoting our company and telling what makes us unique so that it appeals to them as they're evaluating us versus all these other potential opportunities they might have. Right. What's your value proposition? What makes you different? Most people that come and interview here at Blue Fire Leads, they're interviewing elsewhere. And sometimes they even tell us that like, Hey, you know, I'm interviewing with other people or when we uh, send a job offer, they want some time to think about it because they're in the process of interviewing with other companies. So in the market now, we just have to remember that we're not the only ones that they're trying to, that they're interviewing with. They're talking to other people, they're networking, they're going to these interviews. And so it's very important for you to sell them on why they should come work for you. And it has a, it's a combination of culture, culture benefits, you know, the people they'll work with, the, the projects they'll work on, you know, the, just everything about your company, your mission, your vision, your values, all these different things they're going to be weighing it against every other company that they're interviewing for. So you need to sell them on, Hey, this is why you should come work for us. Yeah. I love it. Well, Bryce, these have been excellent, excellent tips when it comes to, you know, interviewing applicants with purpose is kind of what we started this with. Are there, is there anything um, outstanding that we haven't yet really discussed that you feel is really important as you go through that interview process, making sure that it's done with purpose? Yeah. I think just having a game plan, so when I do interviews, I do it usually with someone else, with the, with the manager of that department. And so usually coming up with a game plan of, you know, who's going to start the interview, what questions are going to be asked. After a while, we've gotten kind of in a flow where we kind of know when the other person can interject, 
which questions to ask, when to ask the questions, when to you know ask follow-up questions to an answer. And so I think it just takes practice. It, it takes a lot of trial and error, you know, asking questions that don't really work. Okay, let's change this up. Let's, let's do something different. Or I ask the question, but really it should really come from you or from the manager as opposed to myself. Um, it, it, it's just better to, the more you practice, the better you get. Oh, yeah. I think that's a really important point too, because sometimes I think that some of us could say or think that, Hey, I'm just naturally a good interviewer or I'm naturally not a good interviewer. But what I'm hearing you say is, you know, it's a skill. It's, it's, you have to have a learning mindset. You have to go in and constantly be, be prepared, number one, and then constantly assess what can you do better as you come out of it and what can you do, you know, better the next time and, and improve over time. Right. Right. So uh, to kind of give an, an example that I've kind of given before, the question about, tell us about yourself. So when I was in my MBA program, we talked about when somebody says, tell me about yourself, you give your elevator pitch, your 30 to 60 second pitch of you know who you are and why they should hire you. And in a lot of interviews I've given, I've realized that people aren't taught that. Not everybody was taught that. And so we'd get all these crazy answers of things that had nothing to do with you know what we we're hiring for. And so we had to pivot even though in my mind, my bias is no, when somebody asks you, tell me about yourself, this is how you do it. Um, if the people you're interviewing, if they're not, if they don't know that, uh, and I can think of other questions as well, where I'm like, oh, this is how you answer this question. That's easy. But if they've never been taught and you start getting a lot of applicants that are just not answering that question, the way you think it should be answered. Well, then you have to look at yourself and say, okay, what can I do to change this? So I can get what I'm looking for and make everybody feel comfortable and not feel like, Oh, I just wasted a question. Yeah. I think that's great. I think it's an excellent, excellent tip. So Bryce, last question I have for you kind of on this topic before we wrap up here is, you know, I know you have spent a lot of your career interviewing previously in full-time recruiting roles. I know you've really grown and ramped up the team and been a big part of that. There at blue fire leads the last few years you've been there. So as you have worked to improve your interviewing process, what results have you seen from doing that? I think we just get better uh, interviews uh, because we're getting better answers. We're getting better information of, you know, should we hire this person? And I think we leave uh, less frustrated from interviews because instead of saying, oh, like, I don't know, like, should we, should we invite them for a second interview? Like, we didn't really get the information we needed. We feel that, okay, we can make a good decision. This person would be a good fit to bring in for a second interview or this person would not be a good fit to uh, come in for a second interview. So I think it's just, uh, like I said, trial and error has helped us so that we have better results. I think that that's so key too, because I know one of the biggest challenges that small businesses especially face is when it comes to hiring people. How do you attract and hire the best qualified applicants? It can be a challenge for small businesses, especially when there's that solo HR person or a small HR team where you have to wear the recruiter hat and then all the other different functions with that falls under HR. So I think exactly what you said is just so important for small businesses that you're more efficient and you get better results when you put a little more process and a little bit more practice into how you approach the interviewing process. Is that right? Exactly. Yep. Excellent. Well, Bryce, this has been awesome. I've loved the tips that you shared today. You know, one of the last questions I really like to ask all of our guests on the show has to do with something that's important to our company, Eddie. And part of our, our vision for the world is we, we really believe that that building a healthy business is one of the most charitable things that you can do because you have the opportunity to impact the lives of employees and customers and your community. So in your opinion, what is the quote unquote, the right way to build a healthy business? I think if you build your people, you build your business, right? Your people are the ones that are going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting, a lot of the work. Uh, they're going to be putting in the hours. If you build your people, they're going to be happy. They're going to build the business. And then you're going to be able to reach your, whatever your mission or your vision might be. And you'll be able to, you know, share your values with, you know, with the outside world. And so I think if you build your people, they're going to build your business. And it's just, I think it's a wonderful thing for people to build other people up. You get so much satisfaction from it. You know, everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to come to work and be happy. Everybody wants to make a difference at work. And I think when you create that environment where people feel like, hey, I'm, I'm valued, then they bring more value to that company. 
I love that to build your people so they can build your business. I think that's excellent. I think that's a hard transition again for small business leaders. A lot of times where you go from maybe a solo entrepreneur operation to then you start building out a team or you're a small team where you're doing everything for the business to now you're in a leadership role where your focus transitions from building the business to building the people so they can build your business. I think that's awesome. Awesome advice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Well, Bryce, if there's any listeners that have follow-up questions for you, want to get in contact with you about this topic, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Bryce Erickson. Uh, you can add me, send me a message. I'd love to help. Uh, I, you know, I work in HR, so I'd love to help other HR professionals. I've also interviewed a lot of people. So if, you know, people have other questions about, Hey, how can I better prepare for interviews or what are questions that I can you know, prepare for? I'd love to help those people out as well. Awesome. We'll drop the link to your LinkedIn profile in the, in the show notes in the description as well. So everyone can find that. So Bryce, thanks again. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Have a wonderful day. 